It'll be the Murphy Bulldog, the 38 of Jamie Oliver. Final two expected starters in Sudoku Race Fields Heat Race number one. The ninth startup out of Ocala, Florida. It'll be the 388 of Jackson Heiss. And out of the state of Kansas, making the trip all the way here, it is Jeremy Petty in the 77. Expecting 10 cars to make their way to the racetrack. 10 laps, top four will make it to tonight's main event. We do want to say a big thank you to the marketing partners of the Spring Nationals, Schaefer's Oil and Specialized Lubricants, Coltman Farms Racing, Sunoco Race Fuels, American Racer Tire, American Racer South, Delft Communications, Easy Go, Spring Pro Precision Equipment, Adelia Power Sports, Arizona Sports Shirts, Capital Race Cars, Collins Signs, DirtOnDirt.com, Earnhardt Technology Group, FK Rod Ends, Interstate Welding and Steel Supply, JM Custom Laser, Knowles Race Parts and Bodies, Master Belt Race Cars, SFP Performance Systems, The Joy of Seating, The Steering Buddy, Velocity USA, Vic Hill Racing Engines, Vincent Sims Construction, and Wiles Drive Shafts, the official marketing partners of the Schaefer Zoil Spring Nationals. Of course, race fans, you can keep up with live timing and scoring while you're here at the track or you're watching at Home on Flow Racing on the My Race Pass app. That's right, the Spring Nationals. Simply go to My Race Pass and search Southern National Series points, schedules, information, live timing and scoring all at the palm of your hand with the My Race Pass app. What a first heat race we're gonna look at. Corey Hedscott, Garrett Smith gonna be on the front row of this first of four Schaefer's Oil Spring Nationals heat races coming into tonight's. Only one race has been contested so far in the 2024 season. Ethan Dodson picked up the win at Waycross Motor Speedway. Ryan Gustin was second, Donald McIntosh third, Pearson Lee Williams was fourth, and Clay Harris rounded out the top fives. Gustin is not here, Clay Harris is not here, but we got some drivers within the top 10 that are looking to make some moves with a lot of racing still to go in 2024. We mentioned we'll leave here tonight. We'll head to Tazewell Speedway tomorrow night for the Louisville Quorum Memorial. 21,000 on the line there. Then a trip to Alabama, April 4th and 5th. We'll be at Buckshot Raceway on April the 5th, April the 6th, East Alabama Motor Speedway in Phoenix City, Alabama. Then we'll take a trip to the Bluegrass State, April 19th and 20th. We'll be at Ponderosa Speedway in Junction City, Kentucky on April the 19th. April the 20th, for the first time ever, Burnside, Kentucky, we're coming your way in the Lake Cumberland Speedway. Then we'll turn our attention to the opening week of May, Sugar Creek Raceway in Blue Ridge, Georgia. For the first time ever, we'll be there on May the 3rd. And then the return to Dixie Speedway on May the 4th. Cannot wait to get back to Dixie. We'll be down there on May the 4th. And then we'll go on a swing up to Virginia, Natural Bridge Speedway on May the 10th. And we'll be there, 7,553 to win. And then we head to Beckley Motor Speedway for the Beckley USA 100. We're going to have some fun up there. First time the Spring Nationals has sanctioned the Beckley USA 100 and cannot wait to get up there. And Randy Kinder and the team, they've done some amazing work. That place is going to be totally different from when we were there back in July for the Southern Nationals. Speaking of which, the 2024 Southern National schedule is out. We hope to see you on the road. It'll open on July the 12th, and we'll be right back here July 16th. Mark your calendars, July 16th. We'll be right back here with the Shapers Oil Southern Nationals in July. Top four will make their way into the feature, the first of four. Schaefer's Oil, Spring Nationals, Heat Race will get ready to come to life. Sunoco Race Fields, Heat Race number one. We'll see Corey Hedgecock and Garrett Smith. I-75, it's time to get after it on a good Friday. Green flags in the air. We'll see if they will let that one stand. Marler got on the inside of Smith. Smith's gonna get washed up for now. We stay green, we'll go down the back straightaway. It is anybody's race for third on back. Man, what a cluster. Smith fighting for his life, trying to get off the nose of Trey Mills. Can't do it on the turn number four. The track race down into turns one and two. Side by side for the third spot. A little bit of contact, and Mills may open the door for Oliver. Oliver's going to look to the inside. Here comes Tyler Millwood. Transfer spot under attack, Garrett Smith. 
Smith will come off of turn number four. All this is happening behind Corey Hitchcock. Also, Cameron Marler, Trey Mills, they're gone. Garrett Smith's in the fourth and final transfer spot. For the moment, going to try to hold off Tyler Millwood. Oh, and Smith goes off the track at turn three. Smith goes up and off the top side of turn three, and that's going to bring out the first caution flag. There is just a danger zone on these straightaways, and Garrett Smith did just enough to step those right side tires off. And we've got another one stalled down in turn number one and two. That is Jeremy Petty. But Garrett Smith went up and over the reservation, as they say, and simply stalled it over here at the top of turn three, and that's going to bring the first caution flag out. So the first caution flag will fly, and it will come on the hands of Garrett Smith. Unfortunately, that's going to send him to the tail of the field. That is with two laps officially scored of our 10. It's Corey Henchcock, Cameron Marler, Trey Mills. They hated to see that yellow because they had rocketed away from the field. But that battle for fourth, what a dandy. Tyler Millwood, Jamie Oliver, and Jackson Heiss said, you know what, you all fight for it. I'm going to try to get it. So the lineup is good. Timing and scoring lines, everything back up. It'll be Tyler Millwood to go to that fourth and final transfer spot. So single file is the way we'll get back underway. Corey Henchcock out front, took the lead from that initial start. Him and Garrett Smith went down to turns one and two. Smith on the top side, there's just nothing there to lean on. And now we'll see if Garrett can make a rally from the back. Still a lot of laps to go. Green flag back in the air. Heat race number one comes back to life. Hitchcock down into one and two. They'll all fade to the bottom. Oh, and Mills missed the bottom. Here comes Millwood. Trey Mills and Millwood will go at it down the back straightaway. Still trying to hang on to that third spot for the moment. The youngster out of St. Augustine, Florida. Last year's Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series rookie of the year, holding on to that third spot over Tyler Millwood. Jackson Heiss, who started in the last row of this heat race, is just one spot out of a transfer for now. They continue to rock their way around the I-75 raceway for the moment. It is all Corey Hedgecock. We knew he'd be strong here. We knew he'd be one to contend for, but right now, Cameron Marler not completely letting him get away as here's Christian Hanger starting to make some moves. Christian Hanger will slip off the bottom of turn number four. You'll see him coming to the picture right behind Jackson Heiss. Oh, and the leader, Corey Hedgecock, goes up and off of turn three. Hedgecock's off the track. Caution's going to come back out. Oh, and the leader tiptoes off the top side. Oh, my. Man, oh, man, I was looking to the battle back for the transfer spot, and I seen a cloud of dust, and off the racetrack goes Corey Hedgecock four laps into this one. So Cameron Marler just got handed a Christmas present from Corey Hedgecock as he slipped off the racetrack. Nearly a second advantage for Corey. And that's going to hand it back to Marler. Now Trey Mills, Tyler Millwood, and now Jackson Heiss will slip into that transfer spot. So we've seen Garrett Smith and Corey Hedgecock slip off the racetrack on the back straightaway heading towards turn three. Caution, caution lights have been put out. We're going right back. Quick yellow. So the field will literally stack its way up. Oh, and Corey Hedgecock makes contact with Jeremy Petty. Petty had to get on the binders because they were stacking up each other. And when Garrett Smith got on the brakes, Jeremy Petty got on the brakes. He had to, and when he did, Corey Hedgecock was there. And unfortunately... A bad heat one gets worse for Corey as he sets over at the top side of turn number three. So Petty is going to pull that car away. Hopefully he doesn't get over there. It looks like he's driving over the Great Smoky Mountains over there just off of turn number three. I haven't seen the 23 car move yet. And Corey is walking down the back straightaway and walking back to the trailer. Man, oh, man. Slipped off the racetrack, went to the tail. He was getting ready to come back green, and everybody just kind of stacked up in the middle of the field. When Garrett Smith hit the brakes, Jeremy Petty hit the brakes, Corey Hedgecock had nowhere to go, went right into the side of Petty, and that was the end result. 
So the tractor is going to make its way to the back straightaway, and just when we thought maybe we'd got things moving, the BMF house car is going to have to go back to the trailer, and we'll see if they can get the 23 fixed. So Cameron Marler out front, Trey Mills second, Tyler Millwood third, Jackson Heist fourth. That's from the tail of the field. Christian Hanger, just one spot on the outside looking in. Hanger comes in 11th at the points, intending to run for the Spring Nationals Championship. This would be a big shot in the arm. He can lock his way in right through this feature and not have to go to one of those two B mains coming up a little bit later on. So the track crew working to get the 23 of Corey Hedgecock up and off the racing surface and back to the trailer. Because unfortunately his night, I should say the mountain, just got a lot steeper for the 23 machine. So the tractor will haul the 23 of Corey Hedgecock up off the racing surface and we will get ready to go back at it. Still one lap shy of the halfway point as the leader Cameron Marler now has stalled down here in turns three and four. We'll see if he's needing a push or there's possibly something on the racetrack. Judging by the hand motions, he needs a push. First of four of our Schaefer's Oil Spring Nationals heat races. So they're gonna try to get Cameron Marler. Oh, and, and I'm looking correctly, his helmet's off. Cameron Marler's got the helmet off. And the 57 has had some trouble. So Trey Mills will assume the lead of Sunoco Racefields heat race number one. Wow. So how about that, youngster from St. Augustine, Florida? Of course, one of his big wins, memorable win. Got that win up at Bristol. See what he can do here. As it has turned into Sunoco Racefields Heat Race number one, survival to finish. So this will bring Kristen Hanger into that last transfer spot we just talked about. Good pace from Trey Mills. Let's see if he keeps that down here into turns three and four as we get ready to come back to life one lap shy of halfway here in Sunoco Racefields Heat Race number one. We're back green. Mills will dive off down into one and two. Millwood will follow in tow. Jackson Heiss is there, Christian Hanger right there, side by side on back behind them as Garrett Smith trying to slip under the 777 of Mike Skelly. Oh, and Heiss got a little crooked off a of four. Here comes Jamie Oliver. Oliver's got one more spot. He needs to be able to transfer his way straight to the feature, and Oliver just missed the turn. Here comes Skelly to the inside. Needless to say, that is all for one spot on the outside looking in. As it is Trey Mills out front, Tyler Millwood second. Christian Hanger's got a transfer spot, but he wants a little more. Starting to put some pressure on the 31 of Tyler Millwood off of two and down the back straight away. Hanger's gonna look back to the inside, white flag. So I stand corrected. Moved it to eight laps. So down the back straightaway into turns three and four. Sunoco Racefields heat race number one. Trey Mills, you have picked up your first Spring Nationals heat race win. Tyler Millwood second. Christian Hanger will go third. And how about another Florida youngster? Jackson Heist just raced himself into the show. So what a interesting Sunoco Racefields heat race number one. But it will be unofficially Jackson Heist fourth. Christian Hanger third, Tyler Millwood second, and your heat race winner out of St. Augustine, Florida, the H&R Powered Black Diamond, Southway Crane and Rigging, Mills Concrete, Integra Shocks, Fitz Factory Incorporated, Boswell Oil, Colton Blair Motorsports, 
14, JR of the future, Trey Mills. So the youngster survives heat race one, and he will be the first heat winner of the night. Here we go to heat race number two on the front row out of Newport, Tennessee, the newly crowned Southern Nationals champion a year ago. The 20 will be Jimmy Owens to his outside out of Signal Mountain, Tennessee, the 91 of Heath Heinemann. Row number two out of Martinsville, Indiana, the 71, the New Deal, Hudson O'Neill. And to his outside out of Cleveland, Tennessee, the 44 of John Ombi. Row three out of Mohawk, Tennessee, it'll be Brad Dyer. And to his outside out of Delonia, Georgia, it'll be the 05 of Corey Roulette. Row four, it'll be Knoxville, Tennessee's John Llewellyn in the two. The 11 of Cedartown, Georgia's Austin Smith. And the final two cars will be the 15W out of Cleveland, Tennessee, Will Hicks and the T11 of Tim Kilby out of Maryville, Tennessee. So eight laps, officially eight laps will make up. Heat race number two brought to you by American Racer South. Known for their durability, quality, repeatability, and value, American Racer tires are a part of a tradition of craftsmanship and innovation that dates back to 1915. Race, win, repeat, American Racer tires. Heat race number two, eight laps, next top four, Make it into the main events. Everybody else going to go to two B mains coming up later on tonight. So it will be Jimmy Owens, Heath Heineman. How big would this be for Heath Heineman to make something happen here and take the lead away from Owens? We'll find out. Heat race number two comes to life at a turn four. Not a bad restart for Heineman. We'll see if he can get in line down in turns one and two. It'll be Hudson O'Neill to the inside. Hyman will take the second spot. It'll be Hudson back to third. Here comes John Olby. Olby looks to the top side. Can somebody get that second line going? Oh, man, if Brad Dyer got all kind of cattywampus on the turn four. That's going to cost Dyer a couple of spots as Jimmy Owens has the lead. Hyman second. Hudson O'Neill third. John Olby fourth. And there's all kinds of cars fighting for fifth. Corey Roulette, John Lowelli, Brad Dyer, and the 11 of Austin Smith. That's all fighting for fifth spot. Top four for the moment. Seem pretty secure as Jimmy Owens will rocket ship down the back straightaway and into turns three and four. Hyman for the moment holding off the most recent World 100 winner and the most recent Lucas Oil Lake Model Dirt Series champion in Hudson O'Neill who rides third. They'll make their way off of turn number two down the back straightaway. Hudson trying to reel in Heath Hyman to that 91. Man, he's had all kinds of speed, had a really good end to the 2023 season. It's in there running second behind Jimmy Owens right now. And the yellow flag has come out as we got one around down here in turn number four. And I am looking to see I believe that will be the T11 of Tim Kilby. And it is Kilby who turns it around off of turn three and four. So Kilby will go back to the tail end of the field and we will line him back up. That's going to race Jimmy Owens' two second advantage over Hudson O'Neill, or over Heath Hyman, rather. Hudson O'Neill, less than a second back from Heath Hyman, who's running in the second spot. So single file and series director Ray Cook giving them the command on the one-way communication to where they need to be in line. So unofficially, one, well, no, actually halfway, four of our eight complete. So Owens will lead them down the back straightaway, and they will bring that line slowly into turn number three. Back to green we go. Owens will rock it down into one and two. Heim following second. Everybody else follows in tow. Oh, and Brad Dyer's going to climb the ladder off of turn number two. He's going to cut down the back straightaway. So, you know, the high side works down here. We could just get some more guys to get up there and possibly get that high side moving. Right now, the bottom is the place to be, and that's where Jimmy Owens is. Tell you what, it is treacherous on the top of turns one and two. As you see folks slipping around, slipping and sliding on that top side down here.
really a battle for the transfer spot. Brad Dyer just slipped by Corey Roulette. He's going to be one spot on the outside looking in. White flag going to come out this time. Jimmy Owens, he's going to see the white flag. Heath Hyman, Hudson O'Neill, and John Elby, your top four, going into the final lap down the back straightaway. The Newport Nightmare picked up the Southern Nationals Championship a year ago, and at a turn four, he will win American Racer Tire Heat Race number two. Heath Hyman goes second, Hudson O'Neill third, John Obi will go fourth. It's going to be Brad Dyer, Corey Roulette, John Llewellyn, the first three on the outside looking in. Your fourth place finisher will be John Obi, Hudson O'Neill third, Heath Hyman second. I-75 Raceway, American Racer Tire. Heat race number two winner out of Newport, Tennessee. The Vic Hill Rocket, Boom Test Well Services, Reese Monument, Ultimate Towing and Recovery, Midwest Sheet Metal, Tim Short Auto Group, Kohler Motorsports, number 20, the Newport Nightmare, Jimmy Owens. So Jimmy Owens picks up heat race number two, and officially we are halfway home. Heat race number three presented by EasyGo. EasyGo is the leading manufacturer of golf carts and utility vehicles. For genuine parts and accessories, go to shop.easygo.com. Also, like them on Facebook. Fitting on the front row that this is EasyGo heat race number three out of Chickamauga, Georgia, the 17M of the Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell. Tis outside, originally out of Headingley, Manitoba, Canada. That is the seven of Ricky Weiss. Row two, it will be Dawsonville, Georgia, 79 of T-Mac, Donald McIntosh, and his outside at a Fort Payne, Alabama, the 16 of Sam Seawright. Inside of row number three in the eight, it'll be Murphy, North Carolina's David Payne, and his outside in the 1G starting sixth, it'll be Seymour, Tennessee's Rusty Ballinger. Row four in the 126, it'll be Kate Lowdy at a Rogersville, Tennessee, and Brendan Smith out of Dade City, Florida, rolls off eight. Rolling off ninth out of Greenville, Tennessee. It'll be the 5T of John Tweed and scheduled to be to his outside, and he is here in the 05. That will be Joshua Chesney out of Maynardville, Tennessee. Five more cars. Or top four, I should say. Top four make it to the feature. Ten more cars fighting for those four spots. Getting ready to go green here in Easy Go. Heat race number three at I-75 Raceway. Boy, Dale's going to slowly bring him down into three and four, and we're back at it. Green flag in the air. Good start for McDowell. McDowell, Seawright will slip over the nose of McIntosh. Two by two after the top spot. Oh, man, and Ricky Weiss had a whale of a run off of turn two, and he followed McDowell just to the top side of the racetrack. Oh, man, and McIntosh slipped up in three and four, and he's going to lose a ton of real estate. Looked like he tried to get that car slowed down to make the top side work, and then he just went backwards in a hurry. He'll try to regroup. Never mind. McIntosh is slipping up again. Something's going on in the 79. Take a look there at Sam Seawright. David Payne, that's third and fourth. Rusty Ballinger's right behind them in the Warrior House car, trying to race his way in. But right now, they're all following Dale McDowell. Side by side for Brendan Smith, Kane Loudy. Just outside of that picture. Just for the moment, David Payne has the final transfer spot. Rusty Ballinger trying to get the eight off the bottom. The 1G trying to make something happen to get himself in the show. He'll run right up to the back of the eight. The capital goes back down to the bottom of the racetrack. Nothing doing so far. Off of turn four, Ballinger's there. Just no room for error. As we continue to see Dale McDowell out front, Ricky Weiss second, Sam C. right third, David Payne, that's your top four. Top four goes straight to the feature. Payne still holding up. Boy, he slipped off a three and four, but Ballinger was not close enough to take that spot away. Down into three and four will come Dale McDowell. He'll come to the strike. He'll put lap six on the board, two to go. Fight for the transfer spot, still a dandy, but right now you see Dale McDowell off of turn number two and down the back straightaway. The gap to Ricky Weiss, 1.585 last time by. White flag in the air this time. Transfer spot for the moment is still David Payne. Nothing, nothing happening in that final spot as Dale McDowell will come off of turn number two and down the back straightaway for the last time. It'll be easy go, heat race number three. He's got easy go on the hood. It's Dale McDowell winning heat race three. Ricky Weiss goes second, Sam Seawright third, and David Payne will hold on to the fourth and final transfer spot. 
Just on the outside looking in will be Rusty Ballinger, Brandon Smith, and Kate Louding. So David Payne, Sam Seawright, Ricky Weiss, fourth through second. I-75 Raceway, your Heat 3 winner. The driver in a Chickamauga, Georgia. The Clements Team Zero. Easy go, committed gaskets. Clot Synthetic Lubricants, Connected Strategy Advisors. BSI Well Services, Northeastern Fabrication. Number 17M, the Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell. Three heats in, one to go. Fourth and final heat race brought to you by Delta Communications, the professional's choice for websites and marketing in the Dirt Lake model industry since 2002. Delta Communications, the official website and social media provider of the Schaefer's Oil Spring Nationals. Fourth and final heat race will look like this. On the front row in the two at La Cruces, New Mexico, it'll be Stormy Scott and his outside out of Evans, Georgia in the 76. Big sexy Brandon over 10. Row number two in the 121 out of Dublin, Georgia, it'll be Pearson Lee Williams and his outside out of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, it'll be Mac McCarter. Row three in the 15K, the Bruce Kane Racing driver out of Johnson City, Tennessee. It'll be Jensen Ford and starting six, the driver that won the season opener at Waycross, originally out of Bakersfield, California, the Colton Farms Racing 174 of Ethan Dotson. Row number four, it'll be the 22 of Jasper George's Will Rowland and the 13 of Scott Cook. And it looks like we do have one scratch, and that is the pal Tennessee driver of Steve Smith. I do not see him on the racetrack. So Steve Smith will be the scratch here in Delft Communications heat race number four. Final heat race of the night. Everybody's going to have to go to one of, the, one of those two B mains coming up later on. So can Brandon Overton win this thing from the outside of the front row? Nobody has been able to take one from the outside of the front row. Can Big Sexy change that? We'll find out. Stormy Scott he has control. He's down into three and four. Our final heat race of the night. Out of turn number four goes green now. Good drag race down into one and two. Top side is Scott up, or top side rather is Overton. Scott's on the inside. Will he give him room? It'll be Scormy Scott off of turn two. Battle's going to rage on into three and four. And Overton says, you know what? Nobody's been able to make this top side work. I'm going to give it a go. Overton will follow Scott down into one and two again. He's going to sling it back up to the top side. Here comes the Wells Motorsport 76. Will he look to the inside going to the three? No, he thought better of it. He'll swap back to the top. Dandy of a battle up front. Pearson Lee Williams right there, right in the third spot, not too far into this top two tango. Overton on the top side again. Can he get enough of a run off of turn number two? Nose to tail down the back straight away. Just wants to just dive inside, but can't quite get it to stick good enough off of turn two. Across the strike this time by about a car length and a half separated him at the strike. Overton back up to the top. Can he get a run this time? Builds the momentum. This time actually might have lost some ground. Oh, and Stormy just almost slipped over the top side off the back straight away. Didn't hurt him too much. He's still got about a two-car length advantage. By the way, transfer spot, Ethan Dodson. He's up to four. Waycross winner for the moment right now has raced his way in in front of Mac McCarter. Back to the fight for the lead. Here comes Overton now starting to lose ground to Stormy Scott. Scott's starting to put some ground on the 76. Brandon gave it a well to go on the top side. Could not quite get the top side of the work, the track to work good enough off of turn two. Out of turn number four. Two laps to go for Stormy Scott. How about that? Did not think we would see Stormy here. And he's one lap away from picking up a heat race win and locking into the show. White flight flies now. Overton second, Pearson Lee Williams third. Ethan Dotson for the moment hangs on to the transfer spot in front of Mac McCarter. Down the back straight away and into three and four. Delft Communications, heat race number four, no doubt about it. It is Stormy Scott winning at I-75 Raceway. Brandon Overton goes second, Pearson Lee Williams third. Ethan Dotson will hang on to the final transfer spot. It's going to be Mac McCarter, Jensen Ford, and Will Rowland, the first three on the outside looking in. Your fourth place finisher, Ethan Dotson. Third to Pearson Lee Williams. Second goes to Brandon Overton and your Delft Communications Heat Race 4 winner out of Las Cruces, New Mexico, the Clements Rocket, Mesilla Valley Transport, Rancho Milagro Racing, Category 5 Race Cars, Eagle Moon Hemp Farms, Scott Brothers Racing, number two, Stormy Scott. 
So Stormy will pick up the fourth and final heat race win. We have got four from each locked into the main event. Everybody else will go to two B mains coming up shortly. Second row will be the 88 of Sam Burgess. Beside of him will be the 20 of Johnny Hughes. On the third row, we got the 23 of Greg Husky. Beside of him, we got Cody Satterfield in the one. And on the last row, we got the number 18 of Dale Brummett and the number 11 of Will McConnell.